Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I believe this is the last session for today, so hopefully it's the best for the last. Um, so today I'm going to be presenting on uh, orchestrating data pipelines uh, with Snowpunk DBT Python models as well as uh, Airflow. Um, so as mentioned, my name is Adrian. I'm actually a citizen solutions engineer based out in uh, Singapore, very far from here. Um, in fact, I just got accustomed to the time zone here going back today, and I think I need to re-accustom back to Singapore's time zone. Not so good for me in terms of my sleep cycle, but you know, it's OK. It's Vegas, right? So as mentioned, today we'll be actually looking through a technical architecture. We'll be going over through some uh, different components of what I've actually built. Uh, we'll be then looking in terms of the technical aspects of things, uh, do a quick demonstration of stuff, and then after that later, we'll do a quick summary uh, of what we have actually achieved today. So for the overview, um, we'll be looking at each and every individual component, and I'll be explaining why I chose each particular tool set for a particular reason. So let's start off with Airflow. And for the folks who are not technical in the audience or who are need some familiarization, um, Airflow is basically an open source platform uh, for developing, scheduling, monitoring batch-oriented workflows. Uh, why Airflow and why it's been so popular is because, well, it's a very easy-to-use orchestration tool. Uh, for workflows for analytical purposes. It also provides easy to use DAX. Uh, for folks who do not know what DAX means, it's called Directed Acrylic Graphs uh, for clairvoyant pictures of dependencies. And best of all, it's written in Python, right? So you can actually write out your whole DAX, which I'll be going through my code later a bit uh, to let you guys understand how the whole DAX is being written out. And uh, I think also another thing is about DBT and what is DBT and why DBT. Um, DBT has been gaining really quite a lot of uh, attraction. I think I've been using them for quite a while. Uh, DBT stands for Data Building Tool for those folks who are not familiar in the room. Uh, and what happens is that it performs the transformation uh, of the ELT process. Uh, notice that I say actually the ELT process here specifically, uh, because what happens is that with the rise of data cloud warehouses, especially with the likes of Snowflake, uh, you are able to actually push down all the transformations to Snowflake uh, to invade and run it there natively. Um, DBT really helps in terms of the building, the testing, uh, maintaining that data infrastructure. And what happens is that it takes code and compiles it into SQL to run it against Snowflake. Um, so why have so many data engineers and data analytic engineers have been using DBT? Uh, if you attended this morning's sessions from uh, Flipside Crypto, they also explained why it was so modular to actually build out a DBT pipeline. Uh, but maybe just to summarize what happens is that with DBT, you can use actually purely repeatable code it's purely written in SQL, uh, well, which is um, uh, up until now, uh, which I'll be going through in a little bit. And what happens is that there are macros, code switches, and configurations which are actually achievable, easy through the Ginger templates. Um, just for folks in the room as well, uh, basically this is the outline of how DBT runs. So essentially you will write a DBT write model. Then after that, there's, and what happens there is that a DBT model is a single SQL file. Uh, and what happens is that you can see that inside that select statement you saw, I can actually reference, like for example, a table name or source name, and this model A SQL will translate to a table inside DBT. Uh, DBT code is essentially SQL and Jinja, and Jinja, as mentioned before, is a complement templating engine in Python. Um, the next layer that happens after that is that we call DBT models layer. And what happens here is that you can reference different DBT models uh, to each other. So for example, instead of me writing like a giant, giant big SQL statement, and then after that later I do like, for example, a sub-SQL within a sub-SQL, within a sub-query, um, you can see that from here, right, I can actually create model B.SQL, and inside that, inside that, I can actually reference like, for example, select star from model A.SQL, uh, from reference model A, sorry. So this makes it very easy for me to actually track the different like, transformations or workflows that I'm writing uh, in different SQL files. And the best part of the DBT in the layers layer is that it creates those natural dependencies. Uh, the model actually executes by its own Then you're in, in terms of that order. And uh, that's really flexible in terms of how you can actually build out flexible data pipelines. Um, the next part is that basically, how do you then run it, right? And in DBT, what happens is that we have this model command called dbt run. And essentially, when you run the run command, essentially, it will package up all those models, all those references that have been built before by yourself. And then it will create a DAG and execute that, um, um, the, that, that whole model right, against your data warehouse. Um, of course, actually, for DBT-wise, uh, there's actually parallel execution that you can use in that on top of it. Um, so maybe just to explain a bit about the state of DBT. 
uh, the state of DPT has primarily been with SQL based, but I think there has been a quick shift already from the release of Core v1.3, uh, v they have actually been supporting Python models. And what happens is actually in Python models right now, um, right now is the latest, if I'm not wrong, is 1.5. Uh, but for Python models, it actually naturally supports the native Snowpark integration. So what happens is that later on, we'll be looking at a bit of code uh, for actually the Python models. And you can see how the Snowpark code is written there. And then actually, when I run the DAG right, on Airflow, you can see the push down actually from DBT into Snowpark, uh, using Snowpark to push the Snowflake. So just to also allow the folks in the room to explain, and I kind of like just created this heat map to allow everyone to understand what you can do in terms of data engineering in the data cloud for Snowflake. Um, and just as an overview, right, um, from the left, you have actually different data ingestion techniques. Of course, we announced about Iceberg, different connectors, the batch uh, Snowpipe streaming. Um, there's actually the Kafka connector schema detection evolution. In terms of the data transformation, everyone has been hearing about Snowpark, uh, which is what you can use for running Python in top of Snowflake. Um, you have different things like streams and tasks. Uh, but not only that, right now, you have things called dynamic tables, which was what uh, Stephen was going through just now, uh, talking about how you can use dynamic tables to actually produce actually that CDC capability within Snowflake. Uh, and then or layer on top of that is actually the different uh, capabilities for observability as well as pipeline experience. Uh, but of course, today, what we'll be actually talking mainly about is about the Snowpark area. And if you guys haven't heard it more than enough, but just as an overview, uh, Snowpark basically allows you to run actually your Python, Scala, and Java code on the server side uh, instead of actually the client side. So that makes it really easy because then you can actually do that natural push down uh, into Snowflake for it to run. Uh, so it really takes off a lot of actually the dependencies on your laptops and stuff or your individual servers. You can just offload the computation to Snowflake to run. So naturally, there are some reasons for Snowpark for Python. Uh, I'm just only going to give uh, three, three reasons why. Uh, firstly, it's because of the streamlining of architecture. Uh, now, actually, also with the integration of DBT, mo Python modules, you can actually just collaborate and run all those Python modules within Snowflake uh, and DBT. You also can build scalable and optimized pipelines uh, using Snowpark for Python. Uh, and of course, within Snowflake, right, um, there's um, features such as zero copy clone. You're able to create different dev UAT environments. It acts as a singularity platform for you to actually support both your pipelines, let's say, for prod, dev, or maybe even UAT. Uh, lastly, it actually helps to enforce consistent security grid because it's all within the data cloud. Uh, and there's actually controls and governance across all your different workflows flows uh, that's running on the platform. So um, just as again, or the over architecture overview, to access actually Snowpark right now, as mentioned, it's GA already. Uh, for Python access, you just need to actually, um, um, you can actually use Snowpark either using the VS Code access, or you can actually use Python worksheets to actually write Snowpark. Uh, some benefits here is that you can see that from a capacity management perspective, as, as it's offloading to Snowflake to run, it actually reduces that overhead uh, and it allows you to actually collaborate on the same data. Now, let me just go on more to the interesting part here for actually the using DPT Snowflake Python models. And what happens is that it leverages on the native support. The Snowpark for Python actually includes capabilities such as the Python data frame APIs, scalar and batch UDFs, uh, stop procedures, Anaconda integration, as well as the UDTFs. Uh, all this at this point of time, the in, in terms of actually the support with the Python-based model in DBT, is leverages on top of this for the support and the Snowpark API for the push down access. So just as a technical architecture before we go and take a look at the code, um, and then I'll do a quick demo. In terms of why, what happens is that in terms of this setup, it's pretty simple. What I've done is I've kind of like dockerized all my environments. Uh, essentially, Airflow is running on the container. DBT is running also within the container. Airflow will actually trigger the, trigger the DBT container. DBT will play, deploy the runbook, load the data into our Snowflake tables as a CSV. Uh, and then after that, it will perform the analysis on actually these um, uh, on, on the data. Uh, and DBT will then talk to Snowflake via the Snowpark and perform the push down to Snowflake um, using Snowpark in that regard. So let's actually hover over to our, our code here just to take a quick look about what's happening. And essentially what you see here, if we take a look here, right, is that uh, for folks who have been using DBT traditionally, this is the DBT pack, uh, folder that you create. Um, I think it comes to no exception for folks who have been using DBT. This is a normal DBT file that you see here, right, that we can write, like, for example, config materialized tables and use the source data. Uh, this is what I was talking about, that from DBT is using that Snowpark Python models pushdown. 
Uh, and you can see that actually, like for example, one Python file will actually reference to actually one table later. Yeah. So for example, what happens is that um, right now, the case here is that I'm actually loading some customer data. I'm loading some orders and payments data. I'm then going to do some analysis right, across, like for example, um, these different areas. And looking at the code here, what happens is that in the customer area, I'm selecting the data frame and just doing a first name, last name, for example. The orders and payments is also similar to at that regard. Uh, but I have a final table, which actually is like a customer data table. And essentially, it's referencing all those dbt files that I created just now. I'm performing some good buys, order boys, and joins, and creating that final data frame. So it's very standardized uh, Python code that you can see here that is using the Snowpark Python to do it. Uh, but essentially, in the back end, as mentioned before, dbt is actually going to compile all this and then perform the push down from, uh, into Snowflake. Um, as mentioned again earlier, what happens is that each of these files uh, will create actually an individual table inside my schema later. So if we go back to here as well, so we talk about actually the Snowpark portion, uh, sorry, the DPT portion, about how the Snowpark for Python access, right, the DPT models actually will work. Um, in terms of actually the um, Airflow component, um, the Airflow component essentially is actually run out from this whole Docker Compose files that which I uh, which I, I tweaked and used for it. Um, but for this, actually, on top of it, it's quite standard in terms of the airflow. But the key difference here is that then what happens is that I install on top of it the dbt snowpark, snowflake modules, as well as dbt core on top of it. So all this actually is being packaged within that whole Docker file and run inside the Docker Compose environment. So right now, let's just hover over to our airflow environment. So right now, I have airflow. For folks who do not know, this is the airflow environment that you can actually trigger the DAX. And I'm just going to trigger a DAX for it to run. So when I actually trigger a DAC, right, what happens is that you can see that in the background, DPT is already starting to run. Uh, it's now in the status of running. So let us take a look at to what's happening inside our Snowflake environment. And I'm just going over to my query history to just take a quick look at it. And let's, um, let's um, just um, run it again. One second. Yeah. So for example, what's happening here is now the DPT models are running already. It's um, yeah, still compiling and running. Okay, so it seems now is what have, what's happened is that actually you can see here, right, that whatever code that we created just now uh, is already creating and running as a stop procedure of a particular interest. I want to actually just maybe talk about this item. So you saw just now that whole giant code that I wrote. I mean, not giant code, but that whole um, uh, Python code that I wrote essentially just now. Um, it's actually being stored up as a stored procedure and passing actually whatever code I have written here into a Snowpark Python module for it to run. So with this actually as a stored procedure, right, in the background, DPT is enacting this to create the stored procedure, and then it will act at the workflow to actually create the different tables uh, into Snowflake. Um, from here, right, you can see that you can see that actually inside the console itself, the tracking of actually the different DPT models are actually happening within the console itself uh, onto Snowflake. And let us go over into our demo schema, where actually my tables are being materialized. So we can see that the data is being materialized and being created into here. We can see that actually this is our first dbt model that I created as a transient table. Uh, but we see here that basically I have my staging customers data, my staging orders, and staging payments. Notice that they, each of these items map to exactly to what I have here in terms of my models file for all actually of these um, individual files. So all of this in the background, as mentioned, what happens is that it's materializing it as a table, getting the data, creating the data frame, and passing it into a table here. Yeah. So you can see that basically from the customer data as well, um, that here also is actually creating that table and is also performing that same analysis that I was talking about just now to aggregate all that information together and uh, push it within uh, Snowflake for it to run. Um, so within a few lines of code, we saw how we actually can create a very simple deck about how we can actually create this whole pipeline right, to be, for it to be able to do transformations within Snowflake. And we can actually easily use Airflow to actually orchestrate all this. So let's just think about if, let's say, you have different data sources, you can use Airflow to actually extract the data out, perform the transformation as well, or push the Snowflake to run it, and run the DAX there as well. OK, so going back very quickly to our Airflow. Yep, our Airflow has finished running. All looks good. Let me just run it just to check one time. It should have been completed. OK. Yep, all done already. We can see the results actually have just happened. It has been created successfully. Um, and you can see here's the cool part, that basically 
um, Snowpark in the back end will actually create that whole SQL statement for me uh, in the back end, right, without having me to do anything. I just literally need to write as a data frame and join, let's say, the data, and in the background, it will actually happen to, it will do the joining for me. Yeah. So going back to here, I think just to summarize, we actually talked about a few parts. Uh, one aspect is that we talked about, like, for example, the whole Airflow components, how Airflow is acting as an orchestrator, how Airflow is also triggering the dbt containers. Um, and what happens is that when dbt is running, how it actually loads the data and actually runs it as a CSV and perform the analytical engineering on top actually uh, Snow Park. Yeah. Um, one more thing is that I think I forgot to show earlier, but I would just actually hover down to allow you guys to understand maybe the, uh, let me just see, the Airflow deck. Yeah. So if we take a look at the Airflow deck, right, uh, this is a very simple Airflow deck that I created. And what happens here is that it's using that Snowpark um, dbt file that I created just now and it's running the profiles. And here I'm actually extracting out, let's say, my dbt username and password for it to run. This whole deck is what you see here. Essentially, this Snowpark dbt Airflow deck uh, is this code here that is being run here. Yeah, so I forgot to show that just now, but yeah, I just wanted to come back to this in case you guys are wondering in the background what happens there. So in totality, that kind of comes to the end of my presentation. Um, I think what has happened here is that we've been seeing a lot of different customers uh, are using actually different pipelines uh, to run their workflows. Um, traditionally, even right now, uh, a lot of them are still using Airflow. Uh, as well as a rising number of using dbt. So naturally, a lot of them are also thinking about how to combine all this together with Snowpark to do all the transformations on Snowflake. Yep. So this comes to the end of my session. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and thank you very much.